Allah gonna be for you. You're with me, Salil, and uh, it's a film that we're always eagerly awaiting. An Aditya Chopra film. Aditya Chopra has actually been very uh, reclusive as far as wanting to direct himself, A, and B, being out in the public. But when he does come out with his films, they're actually very unlike what you think of a Yashraj film. Just get this: 23 kisses in Befikri. Vani Kapoor and Ranveer Singh making no bones about the fact that there's going to be a lot of, uh, well, physicality in the film. And then when you saw uh, Shah Rukh Khan as well as Katrina Kaif in a film, in Jab Tak Hai Jaan, there was a song sequence with Katrina who's looking hotter than hot, and you'd always wondered Yashraj should be very conservative, very Dilwale style, very you know different zone. But now the new Yashraj that we see is in this zone. So my only question was, just when I'd seen the promo, also was it going to be another Tamasha? Because a lot of it was centering around that. Even in Tamasha, Ranveer and Deepika Padukone they meet. They don't know each other. They want to exchange names. They have a good time in Corsica. They have a one night stand, and then they sort of move away. Was the second half is where it all changed for me in that film. This film, of course, is not so dark in the second half, but a lot of it is sort of it's like a deja vu moment. Except that here they've got lots of truth or dares. So if you're wondering what's happening in that entire song sequence, that is Befikre, if it's what's in the trailer, if what they're doing in France, of course, as you know, Vani Kapoor learned French religiously for six months for this. Three months over here and three months in France. She gets a French accent wonderfully well. So essentially speaking, it's like a little game that the two of them play. And then, of course, various complications that will come about. But like I want to say, without giving too much of the storyline away, it is not a tamasha. It's not the internal problems that a Ranveer Singh does face, like a Ranveer Kapoor faced in that movie. That's where Yashraj does keep it rather light. But can Ranveer Singh, in this one-horse race that he sort of, you know, got into, uh, where it was Ranveer versus Ranveer earlier? Now Ranveer, I think, has fallen back a bit. Is he once again the kind of superstar that we're looking for? Yes, he is. Ranveer Singh can carry on anything. He's actually a kind of person who'd be able to walk around in a pair of, uh, well, just socks and underwear in real life in India and not feel ashamed about it. And that's what he's managed to do in this film. Aditya Chopra, I think, extracts a kind of performance. Of course, there's a lot of uh, the comfortability factor with Yashra that has actually come in. But Vani Kapoor, which should they see romance, wonderful actress, then disappeared for three years. She makes a comeback as Aditya Chopra wants her to do. Uh, I think there's something still very anglicised about her, but of course them as a couple work very well. I think Ranveer Singh is uh, the rather sweet, not so brash in the second half is what you want to see. The softer version of him, a bit that you saw in Dil Dhadakne Do. But otherwise, I think it's a real fun film that you'd want to watch. And as far as the songs are concerned, especially the way they've shot the Eiffel Tower in this one. I first saw it in Jumara Bajum, eh, as far as the model films were concerned, I think that's where it's been repeated. So I would say, ah, uh, yeah, it's a decent watch. Ranveer Singh is in top of the game. Vani Kapoor, I think, needs to do a lot more cinema because she's such a vibrant actress. How, how should I say it? The Vani Kapoor of Shuddhesi Romance, for me, was far sweeter looking than the Vani Kapoor, drastically different in the Befikre. I'm trying to be nice here. But three stars for Befikre. Befikre ho ke dekhi aaiye. I'm sure you like it. But yeah, if you're looking for the traditional Yashraj romance, no, it's not there. If you're looking for the Tamasha kind of darkness in the second half, no, it's not there. But the flavor of Ranveer Singh is very strong enough to make you want to watch it. As far as box office collections are concerned, dear Zindagi, I wouldn't say that it's become a hit. 50 crores at the box office, not being able to dominate as much as you know you'd expected in Alia Bhatt and Shahrukh Khan film. Kahani 2, by word of mouth, got better and better but hitting only about 24 crores at the box office. But like I said, it's a film that has been made for a niche audience. And because of demonetization, a number of the collections will be revised on a downward trend, maybe about 20% of it. We'll have to see how Bay Fikri actually pans out. And then in the coming weeks, how Dangal, which is the big ticket of December, how it manages to take in as far as the money is concerned. Coming up next week, we've got the hate story kind of films, where it's an erotica, a sex erotica. But the thing is, Sharman Joshi, I don't know why he's got into this zone, but yeah, he is in this zone. Gurmeet Chaudhary as well, and Rajneesh Dugal in an all too familiar appearance once again in so many films that nobody really wants to see. But Vaja Tumho is coming up next. I will review that. We'll have to see how it does. And with that, we come to the end of today's edition. But before I sign off, here's interesting information for you about Rithik Roshan's Kabil, releasing on the 25th of January. And the film promises to be an awesome romantic thriller. 
Bifo is releasing the film internationally, so mark the date on your calendar. You get treated to an absolute entertainer right at the start of 2017. But for now, take care, bye-bye, and keep watching Bifo You. And the drums, the drums, the drums.